Hello and welcome to Mother, Baby and Us, a photography podcast. Episode 2. Mother, Baby and Us. So for this episode, we thought we would do 10 things that we wish we knew when we were first starting out um, in newborn photography. Mm. All that musical. Yep. Um, just, yeah. just hints it's, and it's tips just that... A lot of people think they can just pick up a camera and just go and do it. And like, while that's true, you could do a version of it. Like, there are things that you probably should know or try to learn before you even start. Yeah. Because it's not as easy as it looks from the outside. Oh, like, oh, I'll plug a baby in a basket and off it's you go. It's really not as easy as it looks. And people, even after they've seen what we do, they think, oh, well, that looks easy. And then they have a go themselves. And, and yeah. then they realize it's not as easy as... Yeah. As we make a look. Hmm. (laughs) Okay, so the first point is um, knowing your equipment and how that is so much more beneficial to you than having the best of everything. Yeah, so like I've been in circumstances where other photographers, I don't want to put like... generalization out there but like you are going to generalize it's usually old men sorry old men but they come up to me like I've been in a specific situation where an old man came up to me and said that's a nice camera mine's better they're gonna buy my photos over yours while we were in a festival and I was like okay old man that's a bit abrupt like I wasn't even looking at you what's going on and then he got in my way the whole entire time. He kept standing in front of me when I was taking photos. Like, he was going on and on and on. Oh, they're going to buy my photos. They're going to buy my photos. And be known to him that it was my husband on the stage, so they were never going to buy his photos anyway. But then I uploaded my photos onto, like, Facebook. It was, like, back in the day. So I just was like, oh, yeah, let's chuck them all up on Facebook. And he commented underneath, literally, one of the first comments, oh, that's why they don't buy my photos. I was like, yeah, too right, because I know laying my camera inside out and I know exactly what I want to do. <laughs> it didn't matter that it, I didn't have a 1DX and spent 10 grand on a, on a camera body. I had a, I can't even remember what camera I was using at that time, but it wasn't anywhere near a 1DX. It meant, like, what mattered was, I knew how to use that camera to, the, like, to, to create what I wanted to create in my head. And... I didn't have to spend 10 grand to be able to do it. Hone your skills before you start spending money on equipment you don't need. Yeah. All the gear, no idea, that man. Yeah. And don't be rude. That's not (laughs) one of our tips, but like, that's a life lesson. Don't be rude. There's no need. Don't be anything, be kind. I I definitely think you don't need to be spending a silly amount of money. Depending on where you are in your career, when you're starting out, you don't need the best of everything. You buy what you can afford and you just make the most out of what you've got. How many years have we made the most of what we had? Yeah. It's only now in the last, like, four or five years that we've gone, right, okay, well, that camera's on its last legs. Let's buy another one. Yeah. And, like, slowly we start upgrading our equipment because, one, we're in a position that we've got the money that we can spend there, and, two, like, our equipment is so old now, it does need renewing. It does, yeah. But, like, that's... You get to that point, don't you? You use what you can afford to the best of its uh, uh, capabilities until you're in a position where you think, do you know what? Treat yourself. (laughs) My work is to to the point now where I can be charging, you know, what, what I'm worth, and... I can afford to buy the next step up. Hmm. And then you learn how to use that one until it's on its last legs and and move along that way, 100%. Number two, always have a goal. Yes. We are the queens of having a goal. Like, if I haven't got a goal in my life, I'm like a stress head and I... Like, Christy, we need to get a plan. And in the beginning, it was just kind of do it, see what happens. There was no kind of something to achieve, something to aim for. Now, we are very set with... This is what we want to do. This is what we need to achieve every month. Yeah, this is we've what got we need a, to achieve every quarter, every year. Yeah, we've got a five-year plan, a uh, year plan, a monthly plan, and a weekly plan. And then sometimes we're like, oh, this is what we're going to achieve in a day. Like, And we've got to break it down like well, that. Because yeah. then, one, you feel like you're having a productive day and you're achieving something. And two, like it pushes us. Yeah. Every morning I come in, I've got my to-do list. I write the day, the date any appointments that we've got in, and then to-do. And then I tick them off as we're going along. And how, 
like when you get to the bottom, you've ticked everything off for the day. How does that feel? Mm. Mm. Treat ourselves to a little um, brunch over the town hall to celebrate. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you definitely need something to work towards. It's pushed us much further, haven't it? It has. And that doesn't need to be a financial goal. I mean... It can be, but... It can be. Um, it could be that, you know, where you want to be in terms of your work, if mm. you want to get your work to a specific point. Um, Book it, a certain amount of customers. Yeah, it can be... Um, we, one of our goals was to start entering um, awards yeah. back la- was it last year, the year before. Year before. And we did it and like we had... We've like, won loads since then. Yeah. So it's, it's And having, that pushed us to do better. Like every time we took a photo, we were like, how could this be better? How can this be better to get an, a better award? And we started on like bronze awards. How do we get that to a silver? How do we get that to a gold? Yeah. You know, so it's always nice to have those goals. And I like even little things like, right, um, I'm doing kind of a bit of everything. My goal is to find out where my niche is. Or I found my niche. My goal is to find my style within that niche. Like it can be a general goal Mm. or it can be very specific like what we do and come in and write, this is exactly what I'm going to do on my day. By the end of the day, we're going to get these orders done. We're going to get this on social media. We're going to do, we're going to film this today. Mm. But I think that the main ones for us though are the long-term goals. Yeah. Because then the little tiny little tasks leading up to that. How you achieve it. How you achieve it. The long-term goal and I don't think we've missed one yet. No, we haven't. But that's because we've... <laughs> that's because we make sure that every day we have something on that to-do list that is pushing us towards that goal. Mm. But if you don't have something to work towards, then it's... You just kind of aimlessly mm. plodding along and you find yourself stuck, don't you? Yeah, you just you're just kind of... stagnant and plateauing yeah. and just not mm. getting anywhere. Mm. Okay, so moving on to point number three having creative peers within the industry that can help you sometimes with your goals as well so being self-employed as a photographer we're really lucky we got each other Mm. you didn't have me in the (laughs) didn't have me in the beginning I mean I used to help you as and when I could but I wasn't with you full time so we are lucky we've got somebody to talk to during the day majority of photographers don't Mm. have that luxury and it's a very lonely job to do so it's always nice to have other people I am in so many photography groups, like all of the. I don't talk to a lot of people on them. Like I'm just there, just paying attention, <laughs> like being a little. What's the word I'm looking for? Snoop, snoop. I'm not snooping because, <laughs> like, if somebody asks a question and I know the answer, I'll give them the answer. But like, you just like to see what people are talking about, yeah, and kind of get involved, yeah. But like, internet friends are great, but like real life, like local photographers, like we know a lot of local photographers. We do, yeah. And it's nice that we can talk to them. And if there's any, like, oh, we got this issue, can you help us? They, like, will just be like, yeah, okay, of course I'm. Yeah. And a lot of our photography, fr- photography friends, <laughs> um, friend. they are, they're not necessarily in our niche. Well, no. I don't think any of them are in our niche, are they? No. Um, so it's always nice that when we get an inquiry for like a wedding, we don't do, do weddings. We know a fabulous wedding photographer yeah. and we pass those referrals on to him. Every single time because I am not doing a wedding. <laughs> do not ask me to do your wedding. Um, but it's nice because we are having inquiries now and they are coming from him, aren't they? So yeah. like people are asking him for our niche that he doesn't specialise in. So he'll pass the work on to us. So that's always nice because like you're helping each other out. Yeah. But not necessarily and little things that. like yes. we had a photographer message us um, this week and say, "Oh my god, I'm been, I'm really struggling with editing newborn skin. Yours, like you edit it so beautifully. I've seen your work. Can you please help?" I'm like, "Yeah, of course we can. Like, yeah. jump on the chance." Yeah, told her like what we use, um, that, like pointed in the right direction. If you need any help with it when you when you're using those tools. Let us know and we can help out where, you know, where possible. And that's nice, isn't it? To know that you can, like... Yeah, because when I started out, that wasn't around. Like, obviously, there was people there, but I couldn't find them. No. Like, I tried to get in with local photographers and they were like, no. When I was doing yeah. work experience and things, like, no, you're not working with me. No. And I was like, oh, just let me... Like, I need two minutes just to sit down with somebody doing the job to see if I want to do it. Like, I might not even want to do it. And it, people always assume, oh, what's another photographer? That's your competitor. No, is it friends? <laughs> we just we just gain friends every time. <laughs> um, 
but there's enough work out there for everybody and everyone and style is different i so was going to say the exact I... same thing <laughs> no but like there's another photographer literally the other end of the street on, on our high street isn't it yeah. he does newborn photography he does it very differently to how we do it there's a market for both mm. like we're still both you know achieving what we need to be achieving mm. and we're Imagine. literally we're literally on the same street so that goes to show that there's enough yeah people out there for everyone like there's enough clients for everyone and you don't need to see other photographers as competition yeah because they're not they're, they're there to help you out and well some are <laughs> we are <laughs> you'll find your 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 um client base and you'll find your photography friends you will yeah they are out there so uh, like having a support system of photographers and creatives in the industry um is great but also having a support system behind you um like at home is kind of crucial too because like it's not an easy field to get into it is an oversaturated market as much as we say there's a client for everyone you've got to find your clients in that that's not a oh t- tomorrow i'm going to upload this photo and then all of my clients are going to find me and we're going to be happy days it's a long old slog so mm. it's like a lot of people do it part time to try and build it up and like you've got less money coming in like or you could do it like I didn't just go right I'm leaving my job and it's do or die and then you've really got to have the support system at home that when they are completely on board with you doing that and they're like it's a joint decision yes like we're going to take on less money I will take on that flack while you were building it up because it costs a lot of money while you're building it up and two that they know all, you're going to be working all the hours under the sun and they need to be supporting you and helping you along the way. Like, it's not a job you can really do by yourself. And we were so yeah. lucky that we had, like, my husband is our biggest um, fan <laughs> <laughs> to the point where he's recording our podcast right now. Yeah. Um, but also our parents and, yeah. no, like, them believing in us pushed us, yeah. like, as much as our mother is... Uh, oh my god but what if what, what, what if this happens and or oh, do you need to take that risk because what if this happens she and is then, also our like again bigger supporter you can't have two bigger supporters but they did they equally are, yeah. as supportive <laughs> <laughs> yeah so bringing on to to point number four a work-life balance yeah. like having that support system there but knowing that you kind of when you're at home you're at home i struggle with that time. yeah like you do massively. Christy doesn't. Christy no. will walk out of the door and then work. I don't. I must, must work. No, because <laughs> otherwise I've a gillam up all night. That the the one time that that didn't happen was the time where I lost two and a half stone in three days and was slight uh, exaggeration. <laughs> wired on coffee. Yeah, he's this big all the time because all I did was just drink coffee, and that was when we were building the studio. Yeah. And I vowed when and that was over. Abigail was in her attic. Work it only I was under the sun going, oh, I don't know what my own life is. <laughs> son? I've got a son. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do struggle with work life balance. Like I will get home and I make dinner, sort the baby out, do everything I need to do. I'll go to bed and pick up my laptop and then I'm back on like doing like watching webinars or like searching for new things that we can um be doing or whatever. It's just I do struggle. A bit, a bit of that is is okay. It's good, like if you're if you love what you do, oh yeah, then I don't see hard, it as work. No, it's then it's hard to not kind of still be doing it. Like, how many times have, have we been up? Like, if our kids are having a bad night, we're sending each other, um, like inspiration stuff on, um, that Instagram. Sounds like, that sounds like we're sending each other it's inspirational course. They're not oh, inspirational. Oh no, no, course. like like images. Oh my god, look at the way they wrap this baby, or look at the colours they've used in this. Oh, I yeah. love the angle on this one. Like, yeah. just like well, just sending. Oh, this is a good um, she audio. She believed she could, so she did. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is mm. this is a good audio for a reel. Let's save this um, for you know future reference. Yeah. At two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, and then we can never find it again because at two o'clock in the morning we can't remember where we put it. But you you do need to know when it's time to kind of put your phone down. A, a big big point of that is making sure that you've got opening hours like on your social media. Yeah. So I don't I don't reply to clients. I no. don't interact with anything like that at home because it's a slippery slope. Because once you've replied to one, they re- they'll reply straight away and they expect you to have a conversation at like ten o'clock at night. I'm like, nope, this is my time. When you when you're opening hours, like make sure your opening hours are on like Facebook or whatever, and then stick to them. 
don't answer messages outside of those hours because you wouldn't expect that from any any other company no. you wouldn't expect it yeah exactly so like uh, if a high high street retailer um closed at five o'clock in the afternoon you wouldn't then expect to be able to speak to somebody in that store once they've shut no. like it's once it's shut it's shut so and that was that was a hard thing to learn because we we were like oh yeah but just reply to them is it like they just they just want to know this they just want it, but it's always they want to know this, and then once you answer that question, they got another five yeah. questions straight after, and it, it was really hard to just go, no, I'm not answering it. And but now we learned a lesson. Yeah, I would like our DMs, we don't get anyway. Like our notifications are so hit and miss that we like really struggle to keep up with them anyway. So all our, uh, everybody gets an automated message on our DM saying just email us because. Yeah we don't get these messages so nine times out of ten we don't get those but when I see an email come in Christy doesn't have our work emails to her phone so that she doesn't look at them in no. the evenings but when I see an email come in I'm like I could just answer this right now nope don't do it don't do it don't. and I'm like mm, nope. and instead what she'll do is she'll screenshot it and she'll send it to me and we've just had this email okay we'll have a look in the morning yeah and just shut me down yeah <laughs> I am learning if you're not learning, if you're not learning, you're not growing. <laughs> Episode one of season one. Go back and watch. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest worry for me when we first started just not replying to the customers was they're just going to go and email another photographer. If I don't reply, they'll go to someone else. And then I realised if they go to someone else because I didn't reply to them at ten o'clock at night, they're not our customer. They they just if they if they emailed us, can I have? Can you do my newborn f- shoot? And they couldn't wait from five o'clock until nine o'clock the next morning. And they went to another photographer. They weren't coming to us because they loved our work. They were coming to us because they were just price checking or they needed a photographer that was close. So, and they are not our customers. Our yeah. customers will email us, know that we will get back to them as soon as we can or as soon as we are open. And they will wait because they love our work and they want us to photograph them. They won't go to somebody else. Or perhaps they will email somebody else and they'll get back to them straight away and they'll go, this is the price. And they go, okay, right, well, I'm going to go and wait for Abigail to get back to me or Christy. Um, and then see what they say because I really want them, actually. Yeah. Um, but that was the biggest worry to start off with, wasn't it? That, yeah, oh my God, they, But they're going to go to somebody else. Um, and, a, and a lot of that is managing expectations as well of the client. Like, yeah. if, if they expect... If you email them back at nine o'clock at night... That's what they're expecting. They'll if expect you, everything to be yeah. dropped from and like as if we haven't got a life ourselves. No. And knowing your worth is a hundred percent the next point because that's something that we didn't know in the beginning. Yeah. And that's something that we absolutely well, that's that I think that's one of our biggest things now is that we know our worth. Yeah. We charge our worth. And some people might think of that as coming off as um, arrogant and it's not arrogance it's it literally is just finding your feet and like just not taking any crap off anybody no. because the people just take the absolute mick they do uh, and like we've been there we've been a shoot and burn we've charged absolutely not literally nothing for a photo shoot like you know a, a free shoot with a with a six by nine or whatever it was back mm. in the beginning just to get people through the door we've done it we've absolutely worked our butts off for no return whatsoever and those people, more, like a lot of those people that came in for those shoots because we didn't know our worth and we weren't charging what we were worth and everything they and they did we didn't ex- set their expectations they were the ones that were emailing us at nine ten o'clock at night we were the idiots that were emailing them back and then yeah. when they came in they were they weren't spending anything because they were like, well, I want that for free. Well, you give this shoot for free. I want this, I want this, that, this, that, and the other. Oh, you got ch- you charge for digitals. Oh, I don't want to pay for digitals. I wanted them for free. Like they were the people that wanted everything for nothing. Mm. So you're working so much harder and getting absolutely no return. So knowing our worth and knowing actually, we deserve to be charging this much money because we have worked to get this experience, to get the, the customer experience where it needs to be, and everything else. Yeah. Like, that's a big part of... Massive. And it sets the, the customer's expectations along with it. Yeah, it does. Like, we are not within everybody's budget. We used to be. Now, we're absolutely not. But that is for the sole reason of we've done that. We've worked our butts off for absolutely nothing. Now, we are at a level with our work that we can charge what we're charging now co- and be completely comfortable with it. We know we are worth mm-hmm. what we charge 
and we know we're not within everybody's budget and we know we're going to have inquiries of people that will see it and think well, well that's expensive we, we get it like but we are to the point where we know we can charge what we're charging we're happy with what we're charging and we don't see half as many people as many clients come through the door but that is on purpose because yeah. we're charging more so we don't need to we're not working ourselves to the bone yeah no we're, we're in a, like the position that we're in now compared to a few years ago oh yeah if you told us like five years ago that we'd be doing this now like we would never have believed it we wouldn't have had time to sit and record a podcast there Absolutely would have been not. We didn't have enough hours in the day because we were seeing so many people because everyone wanted free photos of the babies. Hmm. And I, I would, would, I would give, give them to them as well. Yeah, he was, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. When I first started helping Abigail out, um, I'd sit in on, like, a viewing and the, the parent would go, oh, I love them all and I just can't afford them. And Abby would go, oh, it's all right, just have them. <laughs> my eyes nearly I didn't really say that. Popped out of my head. I mean, it was worth that effect, but... <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh. Just, just pay for one, and I'll give you three. Like, <laughs> like I just cut. Like she was just giving everything. I felt sorry for them. They really liked them. Yeah, I bet they did for free. <laughs> yeah, so like we're a world away from you giving everything for nothing now because we don't give anything for nothing. <laughs> no, even if I want on Christy Saturday, like no. <laughs> she can feel my eyes burning into the side of her skull when she like I I could tell <laughs> I could tell when you're about to give someone away for nothing. Just too nice. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah. So another point would be no we went to delegate. I again have a, a lot of trouble when, when delegating. Mm-hmm. Like when Christy's like, shall I edit that one? I'm like, no, do not touch it. I'm like, get out the way. Let me edit something. So uh, that's that's a big thing. When when you get to a point where your time, well, not when you get to a point because your time is always worth. Yeah. You know, you've you've got to be doing the thing that is most productive with your time. And especially when you're first starting out, if you've got a million customers because you're a shoot and burn, like you haven't got time to be cleaning your, your studio, no. like hire a cleaner. I mean, if you can afford it, but just know when is it's too much to be doing everything yourself. Like we always tried to do everything that we possibly could ourselves, didn't yeah. we? And we, we knew when we needed to kind of get somebody else on board, like we've, um, kind of had some times where we've had to use like marketing companies a web designer because like web designer because i was doing it yeah exactly um uh we've used uh videographers we've used makeup artists i mean i can do makeup i worked on a makeup counter for years hmm. but i can't do makeup while i'm doing all of my other jobs that i'm doing here it's just it's not possible and you know what i'm not doing it anymore it's not my day in day out give that to a makeup artist that's somebody else in the creative industry that's getting a job from it. And it's one less thing that you've got to do yourself. Marketing is one I love giving to people, but it just costs so much. It does, yeah. I mean, they're 100% worth the money that you pay yeah. them. It's just having the budget to, mm. to do it and do it right. Because yes. there's so many people out there going, I can do that. And no, they can't. Um, and we found a few of them. We have, yeah. So it's, it's hard work finding the right people to delegate it to because we have such a high... Um, standard that we set for ourselves and they've got to be to that standard mm. um, and it's a struggle for me when they're not to that standard I'm like my eyes twitching I'm like I could have done this better I could have done this better but you just got to get that out of your mind because like I haven't got time to as do it better as much as you might think you'd be able to do it better yeah you need to be elsewhere doing other things mm. I haven't got the time to sit there and learn how Facebook ads work because they drive me insane and they change it every three weeks they do yeah so, yeah, delegate. A, b- a big thing that a lot of photographers delegate is editing. Like, we don't because we've got a very specific style. And we enjoy the editing side yeah, of things. I love putting a podcast on and editing. She loves putting a podcast on and ignoring me for the day. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> like, my most productive day this week was when you decided you wanted to paint the windows. I put a po- podcast on and I edited, like, three galleries in, like, two hours. Yeah, and I painted all of the windows in the front of the studio. So, like, we both had a very productive day and neither of us spoke to each other. It was, it was lovely. lovely. <laughs> The only thing was, do you want a cup of tea? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to go for dinner? Yeah. Yeah. Um, are you stopping at any point so we can have some lunch? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Great day. It was. It was Best day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, delicate where you can. And even if you can't afford it, get somebody else in. Like, get the husband in or get the mother in. Yeah. Like, for, well, she still does it now, doesn't she? She does, Our yeah. mother works in a school, so 
school holidays. She's like, does the studio need a deep clean? Yeah, not going to say no to that. Absolutely needs a deep clean. I mean, clean. half the time it doesn't, but like a Wendy deep clean is like above all. So, yeah. And it's free. Yeah, <laughs> and she brings all her own cleaning products. She does, yeah. Ours are not worthy. Hers is superior. <laughs> so she comes with her caddy full of all of her cleaning products. So rubber gloves, because she's got to wear rubber gloves, haven't she, when she's cleaning. And we are not allowed to move because we'll dirty the floors after. Yeah, as if, as if we don't sanitise the floors and keep them sanitised and wear slippers and everything every day. I know. She acts as if, like, we're living in dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it doesn't necessarily need to be find some money and spend it on somebody else to do a job for you. Get your support, no, work, oh, get your support network going. Yeah. Who wants to do some jobs? Yeah. Everyone loves a job. Yeah. Work experience. Oh, yeah, love a work experience. Whenever the schools are like, do you need work experience? We've got a, we've got a child here that wants to go to a photography studio. Yeah, I love them. 100%. We've Every had single lo- time. We've had loads of, of people in for work experience, haven't we? Use them to the full advantage. <laughs> they... Slave labour, I love them. <laughs> yeah, well, no, do you know what? That generation, the, the generation that are now looking for work experience work are on their phone, they're glued to their screen. Do you know what we get them to do? Social media. Yeah. We get them to film all behind the scenes. They love like, it. Yeah, they do. They love it. They write in their element. They get to see us working close up. Yeah. They get to see how kind of everything runs. And they've got a purpose while they're here. They're not yeah. just My work sweeping the floor. Getting locked in a cupboard under the stairs in a drum shop. Well, I was making tea and sweeping the floor in a hairdress as I was. So, you know. I, I dusted a few symbols. <laughs> and that was about it. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, just make the most of, of who you can and delicate where you can. Yeah. So you're not taking everything on yourselves. Um, I think moving on from delegation, because we delegate things to people who need to be delegated to, we've had so much more time to look at customer experience and where we want our customer's experience to be. Mm. That That's elevated a lot. Yeah. Mainly because of the studio, we were able to do things that we had had planned for a long time, but also because we've got more time and effort to put into it. So every customer gets they have a phone conversation with you first. Um, they book a pre session. They come in. They have a cup of tea. They have a, go through our prop room and they have a consult pre consultation. They come in for the session. They have got all the snacks. They've got everything new. For, like everything is just elevated that little bit. And all of our customers go, oh my God, the experience was so good. And we don't even ever say the word experience, but they always, like, yeah. that's the most fulfilling thing about it. They go, oh my God, but the experience. I'm like, yeah, that's what and we that's did. something that we didn't appreciate when we first started off. So the like, customer experience is key. Like, if your customers, if the photos, are, obviously, they're going to treasure those forever, but... What people remember coming from a session yeah. is the experience that they've had. And that's what they talk about. Like, if they've been kind of shoved in the corner and, and kind of forgotten about and not had an experience, they're not going to leave and go and tell their friends, oh, my God, like, you know, look, yeah. look at what just happened. Because they don't leave with the product. So that's one of the big things, isn't it? Yeah. When they spend a lot of money here, they don't leave with something in their hand. Obviously, eventually at the end of their experience with us, they will have a product, wall art, they, album, They get you, whatever. they come here a few times before they ever receive that. Yeah, they? they've been here at so many times, times by that point. And every time they leave the studio, they need to leave with something. And because they don't have something in their hand, we make sure their experience yeah. is something that's notable. So when they leave here, they're like, oh my God, that was fab. Like, yeah, and it's like, as much as the studio is great, like, we always try to make the most of each... Like, some people work from their houses. Some people, like, are going out to the people's houses yeah. to do it. Like, you just got to kind of go, right, well, if this was happening to me and this was another photographer coming to, like, to me, you know, I was going to another photographer, what would I want to be um, experiencing? How would I elevate this? And just think outside the box. Do something new and exciting and something that they want to talk to their friends about. Mm. Because... Like it's like we haven't all got big new studios, no. but that doesn't matter. Like no. that's just kind of our experience. Like, and I think being um, mothers ourselves, we know what it's like to have a newborn baby and the stress involved with having to pack everything and take. Yeah. Like, cause the majority of the people that come here, this is the very first time they've left their house with a newborn baby because they're like, they're like between five and fourteen days old. Yeah. So it is usually the first place that they've mm. they've ventured out to. And that's a massive, massive thing. 
now we know it's a massive thing yeah. because we've done it ourselves. So knowing that, we've spent a lot of time thinking about how the client feels, what we need to have here to make them feel comfortable, and then like just worked everything around how that customer experience yeah. is. Yeah, so, like little things like if you're going to forget something, it'll probably be for yourself. So our... Um, customer toilet has all the sanitary products and the breast pads and all that sort of things yeah. for the new mothers. Yeah. Like, and if you do forget something for the baby, it's fine because we've probably got a year anyway because we've got a whole changing station and feeding station packed full of stuff. We've got spare like, nappies and we've got a, a, a bottle warmer and a, a steriliser. And it's not saying that you have to have all of those things. We no. had those things because we had children. We don't we don't have babies anymore, so they came to the studio. So we have those yeah, things and here. Things that's built up over time. It wasn't something yeah. that we opened a, a studio ten years ago and was like, right, okay, this has to have everything in it. Like it's something you build up over time. Yeah. But it's something to be mindful of all the time. Like how can I make this experience better this week? Like what can I do this week that will make that better? Yeah. Or what things can I put in place this week that will start to make the customer experience better? And just do a little thing every like now and again and it'll just build up over time to something that your customers absolutely value yeah like as much as the photos themselves and i think the planning session is a big one not not every photography studio does what we do yeah. where we will call a customer when we have an inquiry in we'll call them and make sure that we have a conversation with them they know everything in advance they understand how we work and then they they are we're starting off on that foot, aren't we? Mm. Everybody's on the same page. Then they get invited in for that pre-session consultation where we sit and we plan it because not everybody knows what colour they want on their mm. newborn session, what they need to bring with them, the, the the difference between a traditional romper and a modern outfit that we put on babies or mm. what, you know, a bonnet as opposed to a sleeper hat. It just makes sure that they're not overthinking things and stressed before they come. They're already in that sense of, I know exactly what's going to happen because we've yeah. been through it. And I, they've explained exactly where we go in. We've seen the studio. We know we're going to sit where we're going to sit. We kind of know what colours we're going to have and what kind of styles we're going to have because we've, we've told them what we don't like and what we do like. Like, it's just puts them at ease. So when they come in, they are calm, calmer than they would have been. And we, like, take the baby off them and then they are just in their own little space over in the corner, like, with they like, snacks and everything. And they know, like, we're in safe hands. Yeah. And just knowing that when they come in the studio what to expect like that's a massive massive mm. weight lifted and the calmer everything is in the studio the easier the, the session goes yeah like babies feed off stress and anxiety in the room like if the parents are flapping then you start flapping the baby's like i ain't going to sleep everybody's flapping around me mm. and it's not good for anybody no so yeah making sure and and when they come back in for their viewing experience we pop everything up on the tv or the, their gallery and they sit and they've got time to sit with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. Mm. And like pressured. No, and we've got time to sit. And if they want to look at the same photo 45 times to de decide whether it's good enough to go in the album or whether it's, it's their favourite, so they want it to go up as wall art in the living room. Like, we give them that time, don't we? And we yeah, eat them forever. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just all about making sure your client has the best possible time they can with you. Mm. Because and they feel valued. Yeah, mm. because they'll go away and they'll say, oh, you're pregnant, oh my God, I've got the best maternity and a newborn photographer, you need to go to them because like this is what happened when I went there and they're yeah. going to want to tell people about it. Yeah. Okay, so point number eight comes a little bit away from kind of what we've been speaking about so far, but it is... One of the most important uh, ones. The most important, I would say, out of everything, which is baby safety. Yeah. Like we were, I was very conscious of baby safety when I first started anyway. Like I wasn't unaware of it, but I wasn't as aware as I probably should have been. And you can always be like more, like you can always learn more at all times. Um, but what, we see a lot of photographers yeah. just starting out now that, that baby safety isn't even anywhere on their radar. No, it just stresses me out. Yeah, no end. and a lot of this is to do with the fact that like they'll see an image and they think, oh, well, I can do that with a baby, not realising the safety procedures that go in yeah. behind the scenes. Um, like, yeah, like on our YouTube, there was um, there's a video of me setting up a, a bucket or something, I can't remember what I was doing, I was doing a newborn setup, and I've put, I put weights inside it, and somebody commented underneath, why are you putting weights in it? 
Right. Well, I thought that was obvious, but I'll explain it again. Yeah. So I did another video explaining why I put weights in. But like, to me, that was an obvious thing to do for safety. But like, then I realized, not like not a lot, not a lot of people, but like some people coming into newborn photography, see all the nice flowery, pretty pictures. I don't think, oh, wait a minute, that's like clipped onto something or that's like weighted down with something else and this well, stuff is in there holding holding the baby in the right position to make sure they're not moving or there's somebody's hand being headed out like that's not going through their heads they're no. not thinking about that because it's on the internet so that must be real yeah and like putting the weight in the bottom of a bucket is second nature to us now yeah because if you're gonna and pause you'd think it'd be but every time i pick up a bucket i forget there's one in there and nearly like dislocate my shoulder <laughs> like literally every time um but, like, if a baby is putting all of their weight on the front of a bucket to pull it's lovely on the edge, then what's stopping it from... Tipping over. Yeah. Like, to us, of course. Just come to it. Yeah. You put a weight in the bottom so that when the baby puts the weight on the front, there's a weight in the back and nobody's going anyway. I mean, we're not going anywhere anyway. Like, we're always no. holding them. But it's just that extra safety element of, like... It's just an extra safety feature. Like, there's... Yeah. And, like, I'm there, like literally next to that baby for the entire session i do not like if if that baby is not within arm's reach i would well it's, it's yeah. never within like ev- if I'm you've got to move for something then i'm there and like we it's always i need to go and get something in there can you take over and then i'll put my camera down and i will walk over well not walk i'm already there but i will come over put my hand where your hands are to support the baby again you walk away do what you need to do come back yeah. Like, it's never a point where, oh, the baby just gets taken out of the prop. Yeah. There's never a point where that baby is left alone never. at any point. But the, you, you go on TikTok and search newborn photography, and there's photographers, like, got a camera in one hand, a phone in the other hand, and there's, like, the, if that baby goes, there is nobody catching that baby. Like, they film in it, so you can see they've, they've drawn out, and there's nothing around that child. There's not an assistant, there's not a parent, there's nothing. And they balance on a beanbag. We are lucky that we've got two of us. So you can be doing whatever you need to be doing and be as far away as you need to be. And I'm sat next to him. But even before that, when before you came in to help, I'd always have a parent help. I would. That's what I was going to say now. Not everybody is, has got anybody with them, but they've always got a parent. You'll never have a newborn baby without the parent no. with them. Ask the parent to sit next to you and go, do you know what? For this pause, I want you to be there just in case that baby moves or startles. I want you to be there. They are not going to be bothered by that. They're going to be happy that the fact yeah, that safety first that you were being safe with their newborn. And do you baby. know what? If the pose is that difficult that you need to have a second pair of hands and you haven't got an assistant, don't do the pose. No, don't just do don't it. do it. Nothing is worth no. that photo. Like just do a different pose in that photo because it's not yeah. going to be that much different that is worth risking the baby's safety for. It's just some. I think that needs a whole episode if I'm honest because it just stresses me out no end. Yeah, oh, a hundred percent. But it's it's the fact that we see it. Um, not even a new photographer. We saw um, a, f- a photographer... Teaching classes, wasn't she? She was advertising her class. Doing a froggy pose. So, like, we don't touch a froggy pose because... Uh, yeah. Um, it's just... Oh, yeah, we, we don't like her. It's not our style. But anyway, a froggy pose is where you put the baby's head balancing on their hands and then they bring their f- legs forward. And they ba- they balance it on their elbows, and they? Yeah, they are, yeah. But how that is done is... Bring your hand in. You hold them like that, and then you hold them like that. Have I got a big fingerprint on my head? No. <laughs> um, Let me check my fingers. And then you composite, you edit those two images together to make one whole image. Or even more than that. Like, if I yeah. was doing it, they'd be like 12 photos. They would, yeah. <laughs> Holding them on all sorts of different angles to make sure you've got all of that baby's head there. We saw somebody put them into that froggy position, holding the, the hands, pull back and go froggy position and filming like this yeah it wasn't even like a split second it was for ages we watched it it was sickening wasn't it oh my god like my stomach was in my mouth i was like how can anybody think that's safe like Mm. oh my like that's the worst we've ever ever seen and don't get me wrong that photographer was ripped in the comments like every single comment underneath you shouldn't do this. You can't do this. You what made it worse was this. she was teaching as a beginner class. Yeah. So she was going out to beginners and going, this is what you should do. And then there was a people paying for that class going, oh, okay, this is what I should do. And then like, so there was like a whole group of people then thinking that was safe to do. And it was just, yeah, she did get ripped. Terrible. She did. Yeah. And we are not like the absolute, like, be- like we put safety before everything. And, but there's always more that we can learn. 
Yeah. Like there is always more that you like can we, always learn. We went on a, um, a pediatric first aid course, like a top up the other week, because we wanted to make sure we were on top of if anything were to go wrong in the studio, we'd know what we need to mm. do. Because th- it's, things always change and you're always learning new things. Um, like a big thing for, for us is making sure that the baby's head is where it needs to be. So it's not stretched too far up or too far down and hindering their breathing. When they're that teeny tiny, that little tiny windpipe, one one move in the wrong direction and you, you're stopping their breathing mm. like it's it's a massive responsibility isn't it yeah what we are doing and we just need to know that we are 100 percent on it yeah and as much as we have been aware of it for the entire process not every photographer starting out is aware of that no. and that needs to be drilled into people yeah that you can't just it's really look scary at that there's something. no regulations no there's no the industry at all you could like i could not me i do but like Joe blogs on the street could just pick up a camera and go. I'm going to I'm going to be a newborn photographer today, and the only real thing that you can check up is like a, a DBS check. Yeah. And nobody's checking DBS checks. No. So, like nobody's regulating that industry whatsoever. It's yeah. really scary. Going on from that point, I think point nine would be not everything you see online is real. Like the froggy pose, for example. There's so many newborn poses that are composites. Yeah. And you just need to be aware of that. That some if it doesn't if it looks too good to be to be true, it probably is. If I, if you go, oh my god, how did they, they get the babies to do that? They probably didn't. No, that's probably like a f- load of photos all together. Yeah. Um, and we we literally majority of our work is that because if they're in a prop, it is. Yeah, the bean bag is like a lot oh, yeah. easier. Yeah, I mean a froggy pose is usually on a bean bag, but we don't touch that. No. but bean bag poses we usually do just like posing that we can do without compositing but props where they are balancing on edges of things or in things is always a composite because we are always taking the weight off the neck and there are poses that we do that you can leave the baby go as long as they are being supported then their head and neck is being supported by their own weight and body depending on on the the pose you can leave them go um but half of those we don't either do we because we just we are so we just we, yeah we're we probably the way the opposite oh, yeah, end of the yeah. spectrum like we are a little bit over the top with it but i would rather be over the top and be safe than the completely other end oh yeah 100 percent. and also this is not a baby safety related but um a lot of what's coming out now is ai yeah that's not real that's yeah. normal to indeed than newborn i think i've seen i i don't see, think i've seen a lot of newborn maybe digital backgrounds that have been created by ai but um maternity photos created by ai are everywhere and as much as they're all different because they're AI, ai they all look exactly the same you can see can't you as soon as it comes up like there's us jumping on a plane oh let's fly to this country you know muggins be are paying a fortune to go flying places yeah. and then they just go oh let me get, have a look at beach in marbella and chuck it up on ai <laughs> like what i just but yeah <laughs> that's not real either no and I'm sure it's great right now, and it's all trendy, but that's not going to last two minutes. No. And that's not our style anyway. So, but yeah, when you see all these extravagant locations that don't look real, they're not. <laughs> I was that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was done. Like, it's the ones that, like, uh, like these big gothic rooms that are, like, yeah. filled with, like, all these flowers. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Oh, that's not real. Yeah. Like, it take, took me a split second to realise the first time I seen one. I was like, where on earth is that? And I sent you a look. I was like, look at this location. And I was like, ah, oh, that was created by AI. That didn't actually exist. That's really sad. Yeah. I love a little gothic like location. Yeah, given expectations that are just not there. Yeah. And your customer experience comes into that because a customer coming into the studio to have a photo taken and go, oh, yeah, I want that background. And you're going to go, oh, yeah, that was created on my computer. I can't give you that background. Yeah. You'll have to see it in like six weeks. Yeah. And they come in and they stand in and they pause in and they don't know. They can't What's see it in their head, so they don't know. Them. Yeah, mm. yeah I, don't, I don't know how I feel about that. I do know how I feel about it, I don't like it. Like, it's great <laughs> for the people that are doing it, but I don't like it. Hmm. As well as that, not everything you see in terms of, like, following and, uh, like, you know, how, how many how many people are following on, on, on Instagram, a lot of that's not real either. As in, people will have a lot of following, but and there's no engagement. No engagement. Yeah. So you and so it, like you're looking at these photographers like oh my god they've got all these many followers they must be doing amazing and I like I look at the comments I'm like they've had one comment so they like as much as they're probably doing great and they like whatever their goals are they I'm sure they're reaching them and whatever else like 
take everything you see with a pinch of salt because yeah. they probably it, in the same boat as you. And it doesn't mean that their business is thriving just because they might have, I don't know, 50,000 followers on Instagram. It doesn't mean that they are, you know, earning any more money than you are no. on the daily. They don't have as many inquiries as you. Like, we, we have enough inquiries for us to run a successful business with the amount of followers that we yeah. have on social media, and which is... we would be deemed to have no followers, really. We would, yeah. But, like, our followers interact, so... Yeah, and the followers that we do have are genuine people that like to see our work, and, and they're either... Reply to our stories constantly. <laughs> yeah, and they're, they're people that um, have either had a session with us or they, they're potentially, you know, yeah. going to book because they, they like what we do when they interact with everything. So yeah. it's not... Don't, don't believe everything that you see. And it, it isn't a reflection on... on how well you're doing no just because somebody's got more followers on instagram yeah. our last point point number 10 social media is not the be all and end all it's not everything um it's great to be on there you've got to be on there for free marketing like you'd be silly not to be on instagram and tiktok and all this stuff to be to create brand awareness but if those social media sites go down for whatever reason like they all intermittently go down where are people going to find you your website your SEO has got to be on point. You've got to be keeping up with SEO, which is probably something you can delegate if you don't know enough about it, um, but something that should be kept up to date as much as possible, as much as you can afford to, constantly updating your website with blog posts or new photos, just to make sure that you're being found. Because if social media goes down, that's it. Like, And your website needs to look the part as well, doesn't it? Like we spent... Yeah, you know, a lot of money on on finding the right person to do our website so that it looks, yeah, that it represents our brand. So when when you get to that point, a client will see, oh, hang on, this is this is the the yeah. photographer for me. Um, but e- even without the website, if everything was to go, experience yeah. is what gives your clients the oomph to go. Oh, did you see that? photographer i went to this photographer she was amazing blah blah blah, blah. it's word of mouth if the internet dies tomorrow you've got still got word of mouth because mm. you experienced put all those little points all 10 points together like you've got a one-stop shop of a successfully running business yeah um because everything feeds off each other like one little point will move on to the next move on to the next and it just means that everything kind of gels together and starts working like a well-oiled machine and yeah i think it's yeah. worked wonders for us <laughs> absolutely and we've been there and done it haven't we we've made all the mistakes yeah. to know oh hang on let's not do that and oh we probably shouldn't have started like that maybe if we'd done it like this yeah but it's fine like without those mistakes we wouldn't have known that would we no. and we wouldn't be sat here 11 years nearly later oh, it's mad isn't it mm. in, the, in a fabulous studio that took blood sweat and tears and yes yeah, hard work like there's no like saying that there's no hard work no. it doesn't look like hard work from the outside i'm sure but it is like yeah. And it has literally been blood, sweat and tears. Like, it's just taking everything. But we absolutely love it. It's, yeah. not, a, it's not a job. It's like, I love coming to work every and day. Me. Like, I went on holidays for two weeks in oh January. And I couldn't wait to get back. No, she was messaging me every day. Like, as much as I absolutely loved the holiday and I needed a break. Like, I absolutely needed the break. Like, I hit the ground and I was, like, in London. So jet lagged. I was like, oh, I'm going to work tomorrow. And I was excited about it. <laughs> Like, there's, there's no other job in the world like it. Like, I wouldn't be doing anything no, else. No. So, yeah. It's definitely worth the hard work. But if we're going to help anybody out who's new starting in it, mm-hmm. like, if they can take away anything from yeah, what we've talked take about. Yeah, you tiniest little bit of information away from it. Baby this. safety. <laughs> yeah, if it's one thing, it's baby safety, please. <laughs> um, but, yeah, if you're already doing baby safety and you take away... Like, oh, actually, I'm going to delegate that little bit of whatever. Oh, and it opens up that little bit of extra room for you to go, oh, do you know what? My customer experience can now, do you know what I mean? It all kind of snowballs and yeah. it makes something bigger. Or, or if you, you think, when I get home tonight, that's it. I'm not looking at my phone. I'm going to spend my time with my family. I'm going to have a nice meal around the, the table and not be interrupted by, oh, I'm on a second. I got a customer emailing yeah. me. Like, you know, it makes a difference, yeah. doesn't it? And knowing these things earlier on in the process helps. Yeah. Probably wouldn't have been hospitalised so many times. <laughs> it's not funny, I shouldn't laugh. So we're going to end today's episode without a question because that is a lot of information to take in. It is, yeah. And I don't want to stress anybody out more than needed. <laughs> no. 
But if you would like to leave us a question in the comments, um, we're going to be answering them on yeah. future episodes anyway. As the season goes on. Absolutely. And don't forget to subscribe so that we can carry on doing what we're doing. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.